Hello, welcome to episode 5 of the CMath Run channel. Uh, we're going to be exploring some more of the Casio Prism. Today we're going to be going into menu item number 2, which is statistics. Right off the main menu, I'll toggle over to statistics, press execute. What I've gone ahead and done is put some information in list 1, the numbers 1 through 5, that's 5 different categories. Next to those, I'm going to have the counts of each one of those items. So item number 1 is 10. 2 is 25, 3 is 30, 4 is 18, and 5 is 4. Anytime you have a set of data, you should take a look at the set of data. So I'm going to press, get back to my regular screen, graph, which is an F1 key. I want to set up the graph. I'm currently in stat graph 1. I'm going to go down and my soft menus now change. The default is usually scatter plot, but right now I wanted to set it up to do a pie chart. Data list is in list one. Percent display. And I can store the percentages. Right now I did not have them calculated, but I would like to have them stored. I'm going to store them in list three to show you that I'm going to go from counts to percents and I'm going to have those stored color link is off. It is automatically adjusting the colors for the pie chart. And the border is in black. So I will exit. Now I press F1. It's going to graph my information. And there it is. A pie chart in nice color. Category A, which is category number 1, B, C, D, and E with the percentages. Now let's see what happened when I go back to the regular menu. There are my percentages as decimals displayed. Let's set up a different type of graph. Still in graph 1. This time I'm going to set up a scatter plot between list 1 and list 2. So I have a scatter plot created between list 1 and list 2. Frequency is 1. It's marking with a box. Color link. I'm going to color link the X and the Y. It's going to graph the color based on the link. I will exit and I will regraph it. So there's my information as a scatter plot. I go into my format. Right now, all the dots are colored black. I'm going to go down to auto, which is number nine. What I did to get into that menu is shift. F number five, which is format. Now when I did that, you notice the colors have changed on uh, each individual point. So as we had seen earlier, I could calculate a regression equation. Here's another quadratic equation. I can copy that information into my list number one. And I could draw it. And if you're studying statistics, I could also look at the residual plot. If I would like to set up a residual, I went into Shift Menu or Setup. The stat window is automatically set. Currently, the residuals are not being saved, but I will go ahead and save the residuals. I'm going to save those to list number four since I know my percentages are in list number three. All the other information, just some basic information on what is happening, what's going on. There is no background color turned on. Type of line that I'm going to get. I'm in degree mode. I'm also in complex mode. Coordinates in the grids. So all your information about your graphs. That very last menu, I didn't want to skip over that one, but Q1 and Q3 set it standard. So let me get out of there. Let me go ahead and graph. There it is again. I did calculate the x squared regression for quadratic. Just to refresh your memory, that's where it's at. I'll draw it. Now I would like to see the residuals. So I'm going to exit out of here. I'm going to select. I want to graph two graphs at once. I'm going to turn on the second graph. Exit out of there. I'm going to set up graph 2. So I go into the set. 
This time I want to set graph 2. Graph 2 is going to be a scatter plot. It's my residuals. Now my residuals are in list number 4, so the Y list I will set to list number 4. Everything else, color link, I will turn the color link on. X and Y. And then exit. Uh, make sure I have selected that both of those graphs will be graphed. It'll draw. Now you notice there is my residual plot right along with my original plot. Stack graph 2. I'm going to set that one up. I'm going to set the format so it matches my original one. Again, I want to do auto because I want my residuals to match with my original data. On top of that, I'm going to draw the original regression equation. So I'll select my regression equation. I'll draw that over. The reason I want to do this is so that when I do something like a trace, there's my point. As I toggle up, there is my value of that point on the residual equation. There is my residual. So if you notice, my original data point is height at 10. The equation predicted at 10.48. The difference is 0.48. When I toggle over, now I'm on the red point. It's got a residual value of 0.34. My original value is 25. It is 24.65. So notice, as I jump around, it is calculating my residuals. For each one of those, I can show you the residual is going to be negative because it's below. And you can see the difference. And it's color linked, so it makes it very clear which value goes with which point. Uh, I want to try to keep this short, so I will do one more graph just to show you the different types of graphs that are cap we're capable of making here. Uh, normal probability plot, I'll skip that one for today. We'll go over, we'll make a histogram of the original data. List one with my frequency list. Now my frequency list, remember, I put in list number three. That is going to be my percentages. So now I will have a relative frequency graph. Exit. I'll draw. It's asking me to set the width currently, and I don't know what the width should be, but I'll leave the width. Uh, you know what? I do know what the width should be. Width should be about 1. So then let's draw it with an execute and see what we get. And there we have it. Currently I'm all gray because of the setup. Again, I can change that, and there you have it. Nice full color. This is a full statistics package. This is just an introduction. At uh, later dates, we will be looking at the tests. We will also be looking at confidence intervals and more statistical graphs. But that is episode five for today. Thank you for stopping by the Casio Prism channel, see Math Run. If you'd like to continue watching Math Run, uh, please let everybody know that we are out there. This calculator is available at all major retailers.